Embracing cloud-native processes and associated technologies is essential for network operators of all types and sizes, but there are a lot of moving parts to consider. Well, to find out what telcos need to consider as they adapt to cloud-oriented operations, I'm talking today with Bajoy Pankajakshan, EVP and Chief Technology and Strategy Officer at Mavenir. Bajoy, great to talk to you again. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, uh, Mavenir is perhaps best known currently for its developments and deployments in Open RAN. Uh, how can Mavenir's Open RAN capabilities allow operators to deliver new services to consumers and enterprises? Thank you, Ray, for having me here. Uh, it's been it's been more than a year, I believe. Um, so, Mavenir is is a software company. We've been around for more than twenty years. We started in the core side, which is IMS supporting voice or LT, uh, rich communication services or messaging. And we got into the packet core space. And now in the last six years, we've invested heavily in the Open RAN space. And Open RAN as an initiative came about with the need to disaggregate the most expensive part of the operator network, which has been closed for quite a while. And it's been closed because it's been controlled by a handful of players because the interfaces are primarily being non-standardized. And what Open RAN allowed you to do is disaggregate that portion of the network, which meant that the radio intelligent controller as a new component can handle external intelligence. You could have the radio, the RU, which is a physical hardware, connect to baseband, which is coming from a third party software provider. Now third party applications can be written, which allows new companies to actually improve the overall performance of the RAN, which earlier wasn't possible because you had these as monolithic closed solutions, which came from a single vendor. So all innovation had dependency on a single vendor versus now with the radio intelligent controller, you're allowing third parties to actually write applications on top of vendors like Mavenir to actually improve the overall system performance. So take, for example, what we have seen in some of our results with the radio intelligent controller is with applications that are written, we're now able to improve the, the handover rates, improve the edge cell user performance. So as a consumer, if I'm on the edge of a cell, I can now get better performance. And in future, we're looking at use cases like where uh, crypto mining is possible on the same server where radio workloads are running, which allows you to actually now monetize the neutral host scenarios. On the enterprise side, we had announced a solution called AI and 5G with NVIDIA almost a year ago. And what that essentially allows you to run radio workloads, packet core, and AI applications like computer vision, all on the same enterprise GPU platform. So as an enterprise server that's sitting on-prem, now we don't need separate solutions to run connectivity and applications. So the same GPU that the enterprise is using for maybe computer vision application can now be used for cellular connectivity as well. And that's not possible in a non-open RAN scenario because it would be built based on custom ASICs versus in this case, you're running on general purpose processors, be it system on chips or x86 from Intel, or be it the GPUs that come from NVIDIA. So as a solution set, it broadens the ecosystem, gets more players in, drives the innovation and lowers the, the barrier for, entry for new players and the total cost of ownership for operators. Uh, turning now specifically to cloud native, uh, what would you say are the key milestones in building a full cloud native telco network? And how can operators benefit along every stage of the journey? So I'd say uh, based on our history, we started always as a software company, but we have seen a few generations of the software change, starting with where a software used to run on on general purpose processors with just plain hypervisors, be it uh, KVM or EXSI from VMware. Then we moved towards the OpenStack migration and OpenStack also came with a lot of promise of automation and benefits for the operators, but in our view, it didn't really take off. But now with containerized deployment, because of all the availability of container automation tools on the enterprise side, this is a great opportunity for operators to actually start transitioning some of these network workloads to contain rise functions. So in my opinion, phase one could be starting with some workloads which are not very compute intensive, like not user plane processing functions, but control plane functions. So start introducing the, the technology, the Kubernetes platform that's gonna run the automation for these workloads. 
introducing CI CD pipelines and DevOps and also starting to train some of the internal workforce to to be familiar with these automation tools. So that could be the phase one of this journey. Phase two is where carriers like Dish and uh, some of the newer players are actually going all in with full end-to-end -end automation and with cloud native software from vendors like Navineer. What that allows you to do is now have common automation tools across the end-to-end -end network, which reduces your cost. It also gives you the capability to start have monitoring from an end-to-end -end perspective, which could then be further monetized. And also because you now have software that's cloud native, you could run in any cloud environment, which means you're not just limited to the capabilities of private network, but you could run in hyperscale environments. As an example, if you don't have a data center to serve a low latency application, you could spin up the cloud native software instance uh, or a local zone, which is coming from AWS or Google or Azure or IBM or Oracle, any one of the hyperscalers and allow you to spin up this instance and serve the end user. And that's not possible if you're not if you're running in custom proprietary box solutions. So uh, I mean, very different from how telcos operated before. Uh, so uh, what are the critical success ingredients in building a fully cloud native telco? I'd say look at it both from uh, a technical perspective as well as a non-technical perspective. Uh, when you look at a non-technical perspective, you now are bringing in new players. For example. Earlier, where the full stack used to come from a traditional network equipment provider, now you have players like Windriver or Red Hat, Canonical, VMware, who are providing the underlying platform. So the commercial models that go along, the support and the licensing model for it being perpetual or recurring revenue basis, that's something of consideration. As I alluded to earlier, the skill sets that the operator need to actually run these environments now it's actually a mix of the network and IT folks' expertise. So being able to merge these organizations, uh, utilize the skill sets from both these organizations to run these networks is another aspect to consider. From the technical success criteria, I would say you have traditional KPIs against which these workloads are measured. So things like how long is it taking to actually do a failover in a, in, uh, a cloud environment versus a non-cloud environment? Or the, are you meeting all the security requirements does the latency of the application change because now we could run in different cloud environments? And, and finally, because the capabilities that you bring with the end-to-end -end automation tools and centralized inventory and management systems, you now have an end-to-end -end visibility of the network, which means that you could now look at doing further analytics and data that's collected from different parts of your network, which allows you to actually not just improve on the network, make it more reactive, but we'll also look at use cases which can actually improve the customer experience. So network slicing in future when it's implemented, it's actually going to be live later this year, or early into next year, because the chipsets and handsets now support it. You can now look at full slice assurance where you're monitoring the performance of the slice and in real time optimizing the network to meet the slice SLA requirements. So these are possibilities that you have in, in a cloud native network and you could measure it the success of these networks through different criteria, be it the launch of new services in, in terms of reducing the total cost of ownership of running the network and the speed at which you could launch new services. So it seems the stars are really aligning now around cloud native. Uh, what role has Mavenir played in the cloudification of the telecom sector? And how will the company expand such efforts in the future? So Mavenir, as I mentioned earlier, we started as a software company around six to seven years ago. Our vision statement was changed to say it's all software, one network, meaning 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G network support and run in an, any cloud environment. And this last part is pretty key from a cloud nativeness and telco network cloudification purposes, because this is essentially having software which can run in different cloud environments, be it private cloud that the operator owns, or hybrid cloud scenarios where part of the network runs in the operator premises and other parts of the network workloads run in a public cloud coming from a hyperscaler. Or scenarios where the entire network is running within the hyperscaler environment. So as an example, uh, just earlier this year, we launched a solution called Network as a Hosted Service. This particular case was with AWS as a partner, but it allows uh, an operator or an MBNO player to actually spin up a full instance and run everything from the public cloud. 
And that sort of capability was not possible earlier with non um, cloud native solutions. So solutions which are traditional closed box solutions could not produce this sort of agility and flexibility in running your workloads in different cloud environments. And taking the solution to the future is, is addressing some of the challenges as, or issues that needs to be addressed when telco workloads run in, in multiple cloud environments. And those are things like ensuring that you still have five nines SLA, ensuring that the security requirements, which are pretty stringent from an operator requirements perspective are still met. The lawful intercept requirements that operators have to adhere to are still being uh, still possible when you're running in this any cloud environment. And at the same time, being able to get the best price to performance ratio. So when a hyperscaler comes out with a new instance of chipset, be it Graviton or a new hardware instance that comes from a hyperscaler like Google GDCE, you could still leverage the software to utilize all the tooling that's capable on this new device, a new chipset. And that's where our investment is going in, is to ensure that together with our partners like Intel, NVIDIA, Marvel, Qualcomm, and our hyperscaler partners and telco operators, we leverage the best of all these worlds, which is having a software optimized to run in all these different cloud environments with the optimal footprint and the best price to performance ratio. And that's where we see Mavenir invest and, and continue to have the edge against our competition. So, I mean, a, a lot has changed in the past few years, but it seems like there's still a lot more to come as well. So, uh, Bajoy, thanks for bringing us up to date with developments today. Great to talk to you again and look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ray. Look forward to further conversations as well. Happy to have this discussion today. Music